So now I was going to walk around this vehicle and explain to you all the different features of it, but let me explain something very quickly. That is rain. That is the Mazda MX-30, and this is a very damp, fully charged. Now there's a lot of really interesting things. I've, I've just learnt a lot about this, this car. So this is built from the ground up electric car. It's got unusual doors. We'll quickly show you that because that's going to be harder to show from inside. Normal door, opens really wide, very easy access. You want to get in the back? They open like that. Now that is like the BMW i3 as we know. The back seats, I'm going to say <laughs> right now, I'm not going to try and get in because that's very small. I think they're designed for small children. But nonetheless, you know, that's how it, that's, it's a lovely big opening. Getting in the front and it's beautiful. These are all uh, left-hand drive. There's actually German registered cars. It's not available in the UK till March next year, but it is a really interesting car. And I'm going to get inside the vehicle. The interior is lovely and very comforting. And I'm going to wipe my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to explain a great deal more. So this is the Mazda MX-30 foot on brake, press button. You have to press a button on this one. Lots of stuff lights up and that, immediately I see that. I like it now. I, forgive me for the noise of the rain on the sunroof. I won't be opening that, but there is a sunroof in this particular model. Very, very analog looking dials there. I can see the state of charge, how much power I'm using, the state of charge nearly full, the battery temperature. It's, it's quite, kind of nice. I kind of like that. The other thing that is very good is the adjustability of the oh, seat. Ooh. Oh, it does some nice lumber <coughs> lumber stuff. Gives a bit of lumber support and also I can go up and down. Ooh. Ah. So I'm trying to find the good position for it. Ooh, that's about right, isn't it? <coughs> it's a bit tight on the seatbelt there. Anyway, it's got a like a really standard sort of automatic gear selector uh, or a directional selector. Then you take off the handbrake does quite a lot of beeping. <laughs> I've managed to make it beep quite a few times today. The rear view with the camera is pretty damn good. Um, there's a, I feel that uh, the front, I'm not exactly so, sure where that is. So the, the down view on the car is actually very, very useful. That is good. So we're actually at Millbrook Proving Grounds in Bedfordshire. Um, for those of you outside the UK, sort of central, central southern England, and you cannot film anything anywhere near it because we've seen all these weird cars this morning. So we're outside now. We've had to come out to the car park outside to rig up the cameras because just over there are some of the most secret vehicles you can ever see in the world. Bizarrely, though, I have been here and filmed a huge amount of cars. Uh, first time I filmed a Prius was here. So first time I filmed a uh, Renault Zoe. I think was here lots and lots of different occasions but they're often on like open day special special events um, so i just want to take this car up for a little bit of a, a ride now just to see what it's like so we've got a very very limited time now that is one of the things i wanted to hear it does make a, a, a an audible sound for the driver which i'm not sure we're going to be able to hear a sort of that kind of sound. Visibility isn't, at the moment, I'm not like blown away and stunned by it. But anyway, that's good. The dials here, excellent, I like that. The very the simplicity of the heating and uh, air, the air con is down on a screen there. You control the big screen there, it's not a touch screen, you control it with a dial down here. That worked very well. The key thing I always have to do when I get in a new car like this to try it out is turn off the audio uh, navigation assistant you know the, in this case a woman who's talking to you this woman the woman in the Mazda is quite uh, she would she would make a fairly good angry headmistress you would do as you were told if she was your headmistress she's quite strict can you hear that that's the artificial sound I'll try it again I'm just going over these speed humps so it's got a sort of slightly combustion engine sound but slightly not Sort of space age. It's got a bit of it's got a bit of pep when you need it. Yeah, that's, 
Oh, oh that's, I'm impressed with that. So, yeah, it's got quite a small battery, 35.5 kilowatt hours. For a, for a car this size is not very big, but this is an absolutely deliberate choice by Mazda according to, according to all their press releases and everything. They went for a smaller, lighter battery. Their argument being that if you have a smaller and lighter battery, which is adequate for most people, and there I agree, so that makes the car cheaper, it makes it lighter, and their argument is the CO2 released to manufacture that battery means that the the um, this Mazda will pass in terms of its overall CO2 footprint in its entire life, extraction of materials, manufacturing, driving, recycling at end of life. When you take all that into consideration, this vehicle crosses the comparable combustion engine vehicle much sooner because the battery is smaller. This is their argument. I'm almost, I almost agree with them because I think it's very, very questionable where those figures come from, because I always want to check. Do the figures for the combustion engine vehicles include the exploration, the extraction, the refining, the transportation of the fuel before it's burnt in the car, and you just measure the tailpipe emissions, because that is about only two thirds of the big picture. There's a whole third that is just ignored, denied, you know, it just is glossed over no one looks at that. I want the big picture of the entire process of producing that fuel and then the externalities of the health costs that are caused by burning that fuel. Those are never, never included. So I don't necessarily agree with that. But that said, what happens is that this car, which is a big luxurious car for the driver and the front passenger, a little bit smaller for the people in the back seat is around the £25,000 mark in the UK after the government grant. So it's in that price bracket. It's, it's in a lower price bracket. It has a lower range. It is fitted out to the nth degree. I mean, everything else about it, really, really impressive. All the controls, the, the drive, the feel of the drive, very, very competent. Mazda, you know, they've done, they've been making cars for a long time. Okay, so it's beautifully made car. It feels incredibly solid and sturdy. So this car has officially an NEDC range. That is an official test that they actually do, an official thing of 237 miles. There's no way, unless you were going downhill the entire time, you could get that in this car. The WLTP range, which is a lot more realistic, is 124 miles on a charge and the uh, range that we tend to trust more than anything else because it seems to be the most accurate and the most reliable when we've driven the cars that are listed there on the ev database uh, which is really worth looking up ev database gives it a range of 110 miles on a charge which i think is probably going to be realistic that said all that said that is still very useful for an enormous amount of people in an enormous amount of circumstances 110 miles is you know, it could be three or four days of a regular commute, for example. And so now there, I'm just feeling the, the lane control stuff. That's pretty, it's subtle, but good. I tell you what, though, when I arrived at the, the show where the Mazdas were on display, I went, oh, that, it, it was much nicer looking in real life than I, and I expected. Because it essentially it is yet another compact SUV, big bonnet out the front. You know, that is that shape. It's high up off the ground. It's got sort of that chunky look that sort of off-road look but whereas in fact it's a front wheel drive family car you know it's a road car it's not you wouldn't go off-road in this but it has it ha it has a certain charm I don't know Mazdas at all I've never this is the first Mazda I've ever driven in my life I've never been in a Mazda before and I'm impressed the engineering is clearly top level Japanese they know how to do it it's really really well done and it's got a lot of intuitive stuff for for the driver. You know, all the controls are basically here. I'm not reaching out to do anything else. It's there. That's where all the controls are. Got all the things you'd expect. Uh, you know, really good safety assistance stuff. Really good automatic braking in the in the event of a, someone pulling out in front of you. It's very aware of the road around it. All that stuff comes as standard. There are varying levels, but it starts at around 25,000. As you pay more, you just basically get things like heated seats. It's the same battery. You don't. There's not like variations of battery size. That this is it. The 35.5. That's all you're getting. So don't complain. But I think people who test drive this will be really impressed. I think they'll like it. I think they'll think it's a 
it's a really good car. Um, I just want to point out that early on, when it was really misty in here, that wasn't because the car can't demist itself, that's because I forgot to demist it. I could see clearly out the front, I just couldn't see, couldn't see out the sides, which is useful when you come up to a junction. This will be available. Is it available in Europe now? These are German cars. It will be available in the UK in uh, March next year. Now, here's something that regular viewers of Fully Charged will know that I really like. Okay, so it's, now it's recharging a bit. I'm putting it on. Oh, so that it has five levels of regen <laughs> on the on the paddles on the steering wheel, and those are nice. So I'm now I've managed to slow down to go around a roundabout. And that is very, very nice. Didn't use the brakes at all, didn't touch the brakes. So that gives you a lot of, I'm gonna have another go with that, a lot of uh, very, you know, I would use those. I use it with, the Kona has those, that has three levels of regen. At the moment it's completely off. Yeah, you can turn it off, so I'm freewheeling now and that's really extraordinary. Going down a very slight slope. And I'm gonna put the regen on one, two, three, four, five, wow. That is like putting the brakes on. It's extraordinary. I, well, what is great about that is, uh, for instance, in the Tesla, uh, you've got some regen or more regen. That's your choice. With this, you've got loads of regen or none. And actually freewheeling, like I'm doing now, freewheeling a car, not touching the throttle, very, very nice feature. It's not a throttle. It is an electric motor pedal. That's what Mazda call it. And I think they're right, an EMP. Wipers, oh dear, let's put the wipers on. Nice wipers, nice wiper action, like that. Oh, oh feel that regen, that is brutal. <laughs> oh. I think the other thing I do want to mention again, because it's going to, this is a, the incredibly difficult thing you can never film, but the head-up display is really good. That is very, very clear. You actually would, you would very rarely even look down here because it's the, the information also speed, what the speed limit is where you are, what speed you're doing, what your sat nav is telling you. How they're like, there's a, I'm coming up to a roundabout in 950 meters. All that is there, and I'm looking at the road. I can see the traffic in front of me, but I'm not doing that. That works, and it's really clear. That, so they got, they got all that stuff down. You know, they can do that. That is excellent. And that's basically it. It's really straightforward car to drive. I mean, the, you know, the, one of the, the only complexity is that. Now, I haven't got time to go through all the, uh, the controls on the steering wheel, but I can see there is cruise control. There is maximum speed. You know, you can put in a maximum speed so you don't go over, over the speed limit, the speed limiter. There's uh, adjustable uh, cruise control. You can set and reset it. On this side is volume for the sound system. Uh, so all that is, you know, that is pretty standard. And, you know, if I had the car for two hours, I'd learn how to use that. <laughs> oh, I didn't use my regen then. I actually used the physical brakes. My bad. I'm terrible. I think it's going to be interesting to see how Mazda do with this car. I mean, they've had a lot of orders already. People who know Mazdas, who know the brand, will be very confident that this will be a really well-made car. They've got a very good reputation. I've had to ask car aficionados if Mazdas are any good. I don't know. I've never driven one. I've never had one. I don't even know if I know anyone who has had one. But, you know, they've been around a long time. They're really, and I can tell this, you know, like these speed bumps, for instance. It's a really tightly made car. There's no wobbly bits. It's really good. And you can see just from looking around it, the way the doors fit, the way the panels fit, all that stuff is really good. The trunk slash boot, haven't got time to show you. Oh, oh, <laughs> there you go. That is a man going over a speed bump faster than you should. I'm only doing 24 miles an hour. I wasn't like thrashing it. So that is my super brief drive in the Mazda MX-30. and. I like it. I like everything about it. There's nothing not to like about it. The cost, the driving experience, the look of it. I think it, I look of it. I don't even mind the doors. 
the battery size is where there's going to be arguments. I can tell that because you could put physically, this car is big enough, you could put an 80, 75, 80 kilowatt hour battery. And does their argument about smaller battery size and lower CO2 as a result of it really stand up to you know investigation? I am not 100% convinced by that. It sounds like an argument that would be put forward by a company that produces very successfully a great many fossil fuel cars, a great many combustion cars. It's really what sort of battery uh, are you talking about? How is it being made? What is the energy that's being used to make it? Are the materials recycled? Because that's possible. All those things. There's a lot of arguments. And then on the flip side, when you're counting the CO2 output of a combustion car, are you counting the entirety of that fuel's life? from being drilled out of the ground, to being transported, to being refined, to being pumped into the fuel tank, to then being burnt once in the combustion engine, and then you measure what comes out of that. It's, it's, it's those figures that I, I'm not completely convinced, but I'm prepared to be corrected, and if that's true, then let's go for smaller batteries. Because, you know, that's what, what is actually important is that we create technology that does less damage, not more damage, in the long run. But anyway, that's it. Uh, that's in reverse now. That would not be good. Now it's in park. There's the handbrake. Uh, that's all. That's all. That's, this was a really quick little drive. I hope that we'll get a longer time with this car because I actually do... I do like it and I could see you get really used to driving it. Um, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Please have a look at the Patreon link that's beneath this video. Please have a look at the YouTube memberships. That's really growing fast and we really appreciate that. We appreciate all the support that you give us to make videos in the rain uh, when we've got about 14 minutes to do it. Uh, that's it really, as always. If you have been, thank you for watching. Boom! <laughs> it's done. Even the ending. I've done the ending. <laughs>